The team at Meta's Reality Labs pulled back the curtain and unveiled some of their research work today in the form of some working prototypes and future designs to explain what they hope to achieve with VR in the next few years. During the 30-minute conversation between Zuckerberg and Reality Labs chief scientist Michael Abrash, we learned about the four main problems Meta is trying to solve to pass what they call the visual Turing test, or basically making VR look the same as our actual reality. The first and probably most important problem, of course, is resolution. The Meta team is looking to reach 60 pixels per degree to try and closely match the human field of view, which Mark stated would take more than an 8K display to reach retinal resolution in a headset. In their research designs, Meta currently has achieved a 55 pixel per degree display, which is 2.5 times higher than that on the Quest 2. They showed this off in the VR prototype named Butterscotch, where you would be able to see the fine print on an ophthalmologist's eye chart. To make this work, Abrash did say the team created a hybrid lens and had to shrink down the FOV to about half of the Quest 2. But he said after trying it on, it was hard to go back to regular VR because it was so sharp. The next problem on the list is focal length. Because our eyes change shape and flex, we're focusing and looking around. When this is paired with a solid, immovable lens, things can become uncomfortable quickly. So on top of needing the retinal display resolution, you need a depth of focus that can also hit that 60 pixels per square inch number at all distances for far and near rendered images. Since currently this doesn't exist, Meta worked to achieve this with verifocal technology that moves the lenses dynamically using eye tracking. This was built on the concept design iterations of Half Dome that has been progressing since 2017. Coupled with those focal length challenges is then fixing optical distortion. This is now being done on the Quest 2 and other headsets in software, and Mark says it needs to be dynamic rather than static through algorithms. To research this, Reality Labs built a distortion simulator with 3D TV technology, so they can test out new lens designs without actually building all new headsets which can take months. This technology relies on eye tracking to only render what the user is focusing on rather than the whole scene which is necessary to cut down on the processing power cost and subsequently the heat that is produced from the device to be safe on your face. Lastly, let's get our nit on. Meta really wants to push HDR and VR headsets to try and match the dynamic range and light that we see in real life. Right now we get around 100 nits for a VR headset while the desired nits for a TV is around 10,000. To work on this problem, Reality Labs made another prototype called Starburst that put a super bright lamp behind the LCD panels. Personally, I just wanted to say I love those Noctua fans on the top. Mark touted the prototype to be the first HDR VR system that they know of in existence, which is pretty cool. And he said, obviously it's wildly impractical in this first generation of its design, but it has been invaluable in learning about HDR in virtual reality. All of these paths and challenges have led to one fully fleshed out design that you may have actually seen on this channel before. Combining everything they have learned to pass that visual Turing test, Meta has created the Hollow Cake 2. We've seen Andrew Bosworth in a photo with this headset on before. The design is the lightest and thinnest headset Meta has ever created and Mark stated it can run any existing PC VR title. The team at Reality Labs removed the need for thick and heavy pancake lenses by not sending light through a lens, but instead sends light through a holograph of a lens. Which as Mark explains, holographs are recordings of what happens when light hits something. So basically, the lenses inside the holocake are much thinner and flatter holographic models of the standard heavy lenses we see today. Kind of like what we saw from Nvidia a few months ago. They then combine this with polarized reflection to reduce the effective distance between the display and eye for a more efficient use of light. But unfortunately, here's the bad news, which I feel like in this interview, Zuck is the dreamer and Mike was the cautious yet optimistic dad coming in with the reality. In its current state, Holocake 2 requires specialized lasers to give it the proper light source it needs to be a usable headset. The lasers that it uses in testing currently aren't available in consumer products, nor at the cost, performance, and size that is needed for this headset to be a consumer-ready standalone product. But he did have this to say. So we'll need to do a lot of engineering to achieve a consumer viable laser that meets our specs, that's safe, low cost and efficient, and that can fit in a slim VR headset. As of today, the jury is still out on finding a suitable laser source, but if that proves tractable, there will be a clear path to sunglasses like VR displays. Lastly, in the culmination of that video, Mike shared the latest headset design Meta is working on to try and combine all that research from the last seven years entitled Mirror Lake. 
This is what a complete next-gen display system could look like, he said, so this design combines the advanced eye tracking, varifocal tech, and holographic lenses to make everything thin and flat. It also plans to have prescription correction to remove the need for glasses attachments. But again, I'll go ahead and let Daddy Mike give the warning here. The Mirror Lake concept is promising, but right now it's only a concept with no fully functional headset yet built to conclusively prove out the architecture. But if it does pan out, it will be a game changer for the VR visual experience. So Meta has given us a great and transparent look at what they have been working on for the past few years and the plans that they have for the future. It all looks very exciting. What year do you think we'll see a headset with holographic lenses? Or will we even see one at all? Let me know down below and I'll catch you in the next quickie. Sorry, this one wasn't exactly quick. Peace.